Savages. We're here. It is Monday, and we're here for another episode of Savages and Scripted. And today, um, I think we have a guest. I think he might be running in late. I'm unsure who it is. I'm not even sure it's a it's a guy. But um, uh, I think he's coming in right now. Hey, your papi chulo is back. Ah, fuck. <laughs> Oh, it feels so good to be back, man. Honestly, I just miss doing this stuff. <sighs> Except for the editing. Did you? Yeah, man. Like, I was, I was low key getting a little jealous of your, of your friends fucking recording. And I was like, dude, I just want to be on the mic in front of the mic again. How long were you gone? It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a minute. So, I'm pretty sure some of you, our viewers know, but we already have like uh, a storage or reserve of episodes we pre-recorded before we started the podcast. And I'm assuming where he finished those, just to cover for the time I was gone. And then you did, I think, two, two or three episodes with uh, a couple of friends. So I've been gone I for did. a minute. Yeah. But um, well, the thing about it, those reserves too is I look back and I was like, we, yeah, we did run out of it. But that's because I realized a lot of them were not as good as we thought they were. <laughs> Shows our progress. That that's the best part, though. Yeah, I look back and I'm like, man, we are not funny. <laughs> we weren't. We weren't funny. <laughs> In the past, I think we became funny after after the first three episodes. Oh, but uh, I so I've been gone legit for almost a month and a half. <clears throat> um, so when I I had two trips, the first trip was with my friend Ray, which I would love to have in the podcast one day. Um, I went with him to China, and we it was like a round around the country type of tour. Um, I got it. For six cities in like 12 days so it was pretty exhausting mm -hmm. just to go through all that but it was great i was able to really get to understand a little bit of the chinese culture try the foods got some bargaining going over there it was just all fun especially going with your friend like that so i went there for 12 days then i came back here <laughs> and then within two days um a trip i already had planned with me and my mom like years ago from saving money we ended up going to Europe with my mom, me, and my two aunts that have been dying to go to Europe for a minute. So I ended up going first to Italy, Paris. I mean Italy, Paris. <laughs> France, Paris. Then I ended up going to Istanbul, Turkey. And then from Turkey, I went to Greece, went to Athens for three days, went to Santorini for three or two days, Mykonos for two days. And finally, uh, I went to... Uh, freaking yeah italy <laughs> i went to rome went to florence and venice and it was just all cool sailing from there and now i'm back so let me ask you this when you came back to the states did you think like yes like i'm happy to be back or did you think ah fuck i'm here again honestly it it just comes down to what you may be asking specifically because when it came back to the states it, it's just like you're back home because that's where I live. So I'm, I'm comfortable. I get to <laughs> live in my room. Now I constantly have to move every three days. I, I felt like, I felt like a freaking person getting pillaged by my, by, you know, by the Mongolians because I constantly had to move and move and move <laughs> or, or a person getting, getting freaking uh, chased by ice. Like, dude, it's, it's just every day, a different room. And it, it got to a point where I got used to it, but it just, didn't feel comfortable. So in that aspect of coming back and just feeling comfortable, yeah, that felt great. But then when it came mm -hmm. down to, I'm like, oh, got to go back to um, going back to work and then having to grind out all these other projects. I mean, me and you have both talked about previously. I'm like, oh, I like it. But I'm like, dude, I eventually just got to the point where I, I, got, uh, I got comfortable just moving around a lot or not moving around, but traveling a lot. But in general, it felt good. I just, I just really was looking forward to it because I was low key getting homesick and missing my dog a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad to know you had fun on your vacation while I was, you know, handling the podcast. <laughs> Which, by the way, welcome to my podcast, Al. Welcome oh, to Savages oh, Unscripted. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, I, I, I like to think you've been gone so long where it's, you know, you're gone. Damn, just like that. You ran man. out of sick days. You're all out of sick days, man. Hey, man, but now you have sick days to use, so I'll take care of the podcast when you're done. See, the thing is, I, I cannot take days off. I, I feel super just uncomfortable. I don't know. 
Why is that? I don't know. So fun fact. Um, so I've been working a few jobs since about 2014, 2013. I've had maybe about five or six different jobs. Um, and I just took my first day off about a month ago. My first day off ever. And this is something, you know, it was approved. My boss was cool with it. Um, I went to a Clipper game. She doesn't know that. But I I felt super bad. Like, on the way to the Clipper game, I was like, ah, oh, I could be at work. But I don't know. It's just one of those things where you realize, you know, you got to, you grind so much, but you got to treat yourself every now and then. No, dude, you have to. I felt like you, since I've known you, you've just been working constantly, nonstop, and You've done like you know little parties, reunions, but you haven't done of a done a bigger break than more of a day, you know. Like you're always doing something yeah. somewhere on some project all the time. So I'm wondering when is okay. Legit question: When are you thinking about taking a break? You know, fucking traveling. I don't know, doing like three days of yoga, something where it takes more than a day to rest. The thing is, I think there's many times. Okay, I think night like. Most of the year, most people can say they want to travel. I don't think anyone does and not want to travel. But no. I think there are certain points where you're not in a position where you have time or the money. And I'm at that point right now where I just have so many responsibilities where it's not going to happen anytime soon. Yeah, there's just so much happening. It's adulting is interesting. Um, I'm alive and that's what matters. That's just adulting, man. You know, I know that there's stuff I have to take care of. I would love to push that stuff away, but I'm not in a position right now where I can do that. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Well, you're adulting, but at the same time, haven't you ever thought about like, well, at least how I think of it is that, you know, eventually you're going to get older and then you're going to have more responsibilities. And now you have a lot of responsibilities. Don't you think when you get older, you're just going to have to you get even more busier and you're probably going to end up regretting it in the future somehow? All right, so this is what I mean. Um, I don't want to alienate you, but our positions are a little different. You had the money to spare. I don't. <laughs> I, was, I was telling you before. Yeah, I was telling you before the podcast. We're, actually, you wanted me to talk about this, so you tricked me into it. But, you know, I'm pretty open about it. But, um, yeah, there's just a lot been going on. Um, I'm basically kind of taking care of my sister and myself. And, like, I was telling my sister today, like, hey, just letting you know, um, once I pay the rent... I can't afford groceries. I've got to wait a few days for my paycheck to come in. So it's just one of those things where I'm at a point right now, I'm just living paycheck to paycheck, but that is adulting. I think we all experience this at some point or another. Hey, you're cutting off a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, uh, just keep going. I fixed it. Yeah. All right. You good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Al has been gone from the podcast so long. He forgot how to podcast. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> But something I will say, though, is you have a huge fan. Hey, my boy, Elijah. Yeah, our intern, <laughs> our intern, Elias. Yeah, Elias. I I was just talking to him before we started recording this, just a quick chat. And um, I I heard the second to last episode that, that you released. And uh, I forgot who it was, but I didn't realize it was Elias <laughs> because of the voice change that you kind of get when you record especially on the yeti dude like for me at least you're getting yeah. compliments for me i'm like my friends tell me i sound high-pitched i sound like i should be on sesame street or something it's just <laughs> if elmo ever needs a replacement we yeah, know that's we know right who to there. get <laughs> yeah but um but yeah um elias has been talking highly of you he told me he wants to start a podcast with you he wants to vote me out of it <laughs> So, in case you ever need another co-host, you know, that, that would, there's someone out there for you. That would be great, dude. Um, especially seeing how you were able to record with all your friends and stuff. I definitely am looking into that since we were talking about it previously. It's it, it. I feel like a podcast definitely helps you open up more. Even though it feels kind of strange because, you know, uh, you're talking in front of a crowd. While you're in the moment, mm -hmm. you just talk genuinely. And... It just is a great sensation. It's really healthy for you to do that. And so I'm just en I'm just enjoying it how you were able to bring your friends over and just talk casually like nothing, you know? Yeah. And you know what? Let me ask you this question. So this, this is what's funny about Savages and Scripture. We've talked about this many times, but we always have subjects to talk about it, but we rarely ever get to them. But let me bring up a topic that we didn't even talk about. 
we didn't even want to talk about. Oh. But um, we were we were kind of talking about podcasts and how not just making the podcast, but listening to podcasts that has been a part of both of our lives lately. Um, how has podcasts kind of, I don't know, helped you grow or helped you change a little? Have they done that for you? Well, for, since, <laughs> first of all, I was getting a little more... Um, I recognized that I needed to improve my listening skills, <laughs> not just from you, <laughs> but I felt that just in, you know, enjoying the podcast on its own, uh, following your favorite people, following their content, loving their content. I've stopped, I stopped watching YouTube videos or even watching shows and I've more, more focused on listening to podcasts, no matter if it's an hour or four hours, it's just fun. And it's, it just makes me not look at the screen anymore. I'm just looking like to a wall or something and just listening to podcasts and i feel like it's a great way not just to stop watching videos and burn out your eyes all day but also it helps you with your listening skills and it, it just it made a little change but it's those small changes make a big deal for at least me so it's it's been a good um change you know i didn't even think of that thanks for bringing that up because i noticed that too because um I think we're so used to seeing things. We're so used to seeing a screen and seeing, um, you know, images in front of us. And you just look like a zombie. You're like, like, uh... I, <laughs> no, I, like, so I've been listening to a lot of podcasts, you know, like around the time we started this podcast mm-hmm. and there was, there's been certain points where I'm like, <laughs> where am I looking or I'm listening to it, but I'm like looking through my phone, but then I realize I get distracted and I'm like, okay, I should be listening, but I think that kind of goes to show that we're so used to seeing a screen. Or or you remember when we first uh, dormed together? I sh- I got you into freaking listening to Netflix while playing video games. Dude. I've done that before, but you got me back into it. Only like, here's the thing. If I watch a drama especially or a show I, I haven't seen before, I have to pay attention. I suck with watching shows for that reason because if I'm watching something and you distract me, I'm going to... I'm going to rewind it. Or if there's mm-hmm. ever a point where I blank out for a second, I'm going to rewind it. And I've noticed recently that I talked to Elias about this because he's been watching Cheers and it's an old comedy. Mm-hmm. But very often he'll be on his phone or walking around cooking and he's not even watching it. And in my head, I'm like, <laughs> I like that you're multitasking, but I would not be able to do it this way. And he told me, and I, you know, I understand, he said, this is the kind of comedy where you don't have to really pay attention to everything. But I'm that person where if I'm watching and investing my time in something, I'm going to get the most out of it. But I don't know. Maybe that's my flaw. I, I have a theory where that's why people actually rewatch shows. Because, you know, at times they're trying to multitask or not fully focused on, on the show that they have to rewatch it one or two times. Well, two times is just because you enjoyed it. But then a third or maybe a fourth time. And uh, it, just seems, it just seems since you're not really, you know... You really have to stick your eyes to something, so you have to kind of be immobile. Well, well, you can walk around and just listen to your pods or your headphones or your beats, whatever, and you could just be doing stuff. But at the same time, it's already you're, that's the only thing you're listening to. So it's I feel like it's more effective too, especially or and more but versatile too. Because when I drive, I listen to our podcast and then I listen to uh, other people podcasts I like, such as Joe Rogan, Tom Segura. Or Chrysler, they're just great. But yeah, I just like the versatility of it. And I also like um, how how much more it could kind of uh, help you with your listening skills. I just love how, well, for one, the podcast culture is growing. I know a lot of people that listen to podcasts. At first, when we were talking about making a podcast, my first thought was, I don't think any of my friends listen to podcasts. We probably have, honestly, out of my friends, like two listeners. And I was surprised I had a lot more. Like, it's it's a really common thing. If anything, lately in the past weeks to a few months ago, I think most of my friends have been listening to podcasts more than actually watching Netflix. Hmm. I think the Netflix and chill era is kind of dying. I think it's a podcast and chill. Well, ever since God uh, finished his show, you know, people have got to find something better to, to do. <laughs> <laughs> they, they got tired of seeing bad endings, so they just want to hear audio. <laughs> Oh my god! I know we talked about this before. I just still find that how funny people were doing a petition for to remake God's um, ending. <laughs> That's not even the funny part to me. To me, the funny part is like, yeah, people got extremely angry and they were starting petitions and stuff. 
but they dropped it in a week. And that goes to show like people just, they want to be angry about it on social media. They want to be angry for likes. I don't think they're really even that angry about it. I bet you most people forgot about that. Game of Thrones craze. Now that we're talking about that, let's talk a little bit about mainstream because I just recently had that in my head. Um, so I'm listening to a podcast and my favorite comedian, Tom Segura, is talking how, and he's kind of edgy. He made a joke. He he made a joke where um, in his stand-up, like it was two years ago, uh, mm-hmm. he said, you can't say the word retarded anymore. And people just laughed because he still said it. But at the same time, when he said it, you know, he's agreeing with it because he's saying you can't say anymore. And he just tried to pull a fast one and make people laugh because he's a stand-up comedian, obviously. And that's what he does. But he remembers during that time, right after the show released, or, yeah, the after it went on Netflix, should I say, uh, he remembers there's mm-hmm. a lot of social heroes who were just making, like, bigger stuff or blowing stuff out of proportion that he kept getting, like, death threats or people telling him to go fuck himself, all this stuff, because the people, the social heroes were saying, like, they weren't just saying that he just said the word retarded. No, they were saying, oh, he doesn't like gay people or he doesn't like um, uh, people with an extra chromosome. He, 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 uh, he, it may, they twisted the word so much. It, it, it's just ridiculous how people just believe it. And you could tell they, they didn't know the context to it. They just heard that one word and then they just made a big fuss out of it. And at the end, he ended up getting um, more support than hate from people but that just comes to show how much uh, people at times want to gain fame from something so basic and simple even though it the full meaning wasn't there you know mm-hmm. that, yeah, that just seems funny to me now that, that we're talking about how uh, people could drop stuff like that because eventually he dropped off and he gained more fame out of it, out of it. but um, people like to really be active on social media when it comes to any aspect of getting attention I, I feel not, not solely obviously that's not the only reason but the, it, could, it could go to those extremes. Yeah, everyone's a social media activist now. <laughs> Did you hear of that one? I don't know. I'll call her. I'll call it. Um, there was a, there was a, I don't know. I think it was a man or a woman. I can't say that either. Well, this person. <laughs> you just offended half of our listeners, Al. <laughs> I already offended too many people. God damn it. <laughs> I think we have men and women listening. You just offended both fan bases, actually. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Now we're going to have to go for the aliens. <laughs> let's let's oh, there's, go. There's a thing like that too right now. But uh, going back, this person, while they were talking throughout the podcast, changed their genders three times. <laughs> throughout a, like a one or two hour podcast. I didn't listen to it. I haven't listened to it yet. This is what they were talking about in the Joe Rogan uh, podcast. And uh, mm. this person went from a man to a woman to being confused. And all in wait one in go. one conversation. Yeah, so like I was saying, um, this person was just constantly doing that, and it just felt crazy to me. It, 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 at times, you just gotta think. It kind of feels like you're getting offended, or feels like they're playing with you, you know? Because it's happening so frequently. It's just like you know, you, you you're not going through what they're going through, but at the same time, you gotta understand both sides, not just one side. Prioritize either just one side. So it just felt interesting to me how all that stuff was going down. I just had to mention that because it just seemed interesting. <laughs> I don't know what you may think about that. I think this is the Savage Podcast. We're here to offend people. Not as kidding. But I like what you said about the understanding both sides. I think that's the thing about social media. I think everyone overvalues their own opinion. Everyone feels like, oh, I've, I've got a Twitter. I've got a Facebook. Everyone has to listen to me. I am right. And where, where do you see this? In Facebook comments and in YouTube comments. They're just it's so so much toxicity those are like the two worst places to look i think the two worst places to find people are donald trump rallies and facebook (laughs) comments those are the two worst places you can find people no i'm being serious it's so bad like oh my gosh this i don't know uh well diverting away from that subject but (laughs) (laughs) wait hold on hold on no 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 no. we're not diverting (laughs) shit hold on no, actually, no. Well, kind of a move back, right. actually, because when you were talking about criticism and stuff, that reminded me. Um, I've kind of just learned to, especially now, I think most people use social media. I, I can, I think it's safe to assume like what, 99% of our listeners use social media. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say everyone uses it or some sort of social media, but I think we've gone to a point where if you get criticism, you're not going to like, you just got to learn to sift through it and just go around that. 
I think we're just constantly going to get criticism. It's really us. If you put yourself out there, now we have a podcast. We're going more public and we're doing more with our social media. So we're going to get a lot more criticism as, as well. But recently, and what's funny is some people don't understand what's going on at times when, when they criticize things. They'll just, they just want to put their two cents in there. They don't really understand the context of what's going on. But I have a friend on Twitter and I'm just going to say this. I don't even know if he listens. I don't even give a shit if he does. <laughs> but so this guy's like a hardcore Laker fan. No, so now we're on basketball. No. no. And you know, you know, you know the whole issue with the NBA in China lately, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, it's crazy right now. Yeah, so that whole thing is crazy. And lately, my tweets on Twitter have been more concerning that not really basketball, but more so the politics in basketball and like a lot of the issues that are going on behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. So my friend is a hardcore Laker fan, as you know. I'm a Clipper fan, but as you know as well, I watch all teams and I respect the Lakers. Like I am still a Laker fan, but I just I just prefer the Clippers. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when LeBron James was basically kind of siding with China, like suddenly Mm -hmm. he was kind of being soft. You you remember that, right? That interview? Kind of remember it. So the GM from the Rockets, he did what he did and the NBA was kind of condemning it. And my issue with the NBA is they tend to be progressive. They want to be progressive. And on top of things, the whole police brutality thing and Donald Trump, at times they've spoken their mind on it. But when it came to China, when this guy spoke up, the NBA was like, uh, you shouldn't have said that. And then LeBron James, you know, he's basically the most important player in the NBA right now. He's the biggest name in the NBA. Mm -hmm. I think even if you don't watch basketball, you know who LeBron James is. And he was in an interview and he basically said that, you know, that guy that posted that tweet or whatever, the guy from the Rockets, he basically said that he, he was uneducated on the topic and he didn't know what was truly going on. And he's kind of basically like defending the NBA in a bit. And I didn't like that because to me, it shows like the NBA is being weak mm. and they care more about the business. And I understand, you know, it's a business, mm-hmm. but they're focusing more on the money and the business than on these human rights that, you know, this whole thing that's going on in China. So basically <laughs> I tweeted that interview, I retweeted it. And I said that LeBron is super soft or something like that. And my friend got so upset and he was like, shake my head. That's something a Clipper fan would say. (laughs) And I'm like, I'm not even talking about the Lakers right now. I'm talking about LeBron's stance in this political issue. But how does this end up, you know, me being a Clipper fan? So I basically told, I said that. I was like, you know what? I care about human rights. I care about what's going on right now in China. And I don't like what the NBA is doing. But okay, if that makes me a Clipper fan, I'm such a Clipper fan. But I think we're at a point right now where people that criticize, they don't really know what's going on. And that's my point from this. You know, that guy commented that, but I don't think he really understood what's going on in the NBA or what I was talking about. And that's the thing time at times, too, when people criticize things, they don't truly know what's going on. No. People don't do their research. We have the internet at our fingertips. People don't do their research. Uh, no real constructive criticism. Um. Yeah. It's, All right. Rant over. <laughs> it just feels that... Um, nowadays, you could just since the atmosphere is just uh, society in general. Not everyone, obviously, but um, what I feel is that people be um, and we've talked about this in previous episodes. People have become pretty extremists. So either you're with me or against me, type of thing. You can't agree to disagree in certain things. So for a person to be like that of both extremes, they could just you know be super loyal to something and that's it. That's your answer, and you gotta take it, and that's it. And they don't expect mm-hmm. nothing more than you because you're in the other extreme. And it, it's it's kind of sad, you know, because at times you, just, you wanna expect more. But um, it seems like that's what your friend probably did. And regarding China and LeBron and all this stuff, um, I just from my business perspective, I just see you know, like you said, NBA is a business, business is a business. Um, China's a big fucking country, and they love basketball so much. I feel like. They'll probably gain two times the revenue if it really blows up over there. Um, so, mm-hmm. you know, you got to take at times your, you got no one to, you got no one to choose because that that's a really soft point. And the NBA is not going to, you know, sounds bad to say, but the NBA is not going to reel in that much money from being nice or, or caring so much about Hong Kong or the situation in Hong Kong as much as they are going to care about the other people. They're like, I don't know. I don't. Even, I don't even know population, but it's definitely bigger than the U.S. So from all those people to buy their merch, if that were to happen, that were to stop, that's a big chunk of her money. 
or potential money you could lose on. So I can understand why the NBA would do that. And LeBron's point, it, it, it's the same thing, just siding with the NBA. And it could be hard to understand at times, but business is business at times for at least this type of situation. If it's a smaller situation, like there's a thing that goes in business, like you gotta, you gotta know when to, you know, lose some battles and when to actually win the big ones. You know, you, you'll lose the small battles and you'll be like, hey, you know, yeah, let's support the people in China. If it's not going to be such a big catastrophic thing you're putting on the line, that helps you grow with it, within your business. So I can understand why both sides. And it seems like LeBron just did that because he didn't, he just didn't want to lose that China support for the NBA. So either yeah. way. Um, not just that. Yeah, go ahead. But there's the idea that LeBron James right now, he's a symbol. He's not just a basketball player. And like I said, everyone knows who he is, whether you watch basketball or not. Mm-hmm. Whether you watch sports or not, I think everybody knows who LeBron James is. You know, you can look at him and be like, oh, you know, basketball, he's an athlete. Like, everyone knows who he is. But I think the fact that it's him saying that and siding with the NBA, I think that's more of them. That's their PR move to China. Hey, our icon is defending you guys. Hey, our icon is kind of, um, he's not on, he's not on the same side as this guy that did this. I think that's, that's what it is. And it makes total sense. But, my issue is with the NBA and their consistency on being progressive and being talking about political matters. Because at the end, at the end of the day, look, in the beginning, everyone was saying um, the whole shut up and dribble. Was that what she yeah. said? And her point was, hey, you guys aren't political people. You guys are basketball players. Do your job. <laughs> Stick to that. But then, you know, they were speaking their minds and they're getting political. Mm-hmm. But I think now, in retrospect, it kind of makes it look like their reasoning for getting political was because that's what was popular. Right now, we're at a point where um, if you're siding against Donald Trump, it's popular. You mm-hmm. know, um, mm-hmm. if you're one, if, if like you were saying earlier, if you're for one thing or against another, I think that's what it is. Mm. I don't know. I just thought it kind of escaped from me. But yeah. I, that that's definitely another yeah that's definitely a great example of what I was previously mentioning, and um, I I just I just said it better Al that's that's what I do <laughs> I'm gonna go off from that but uh, it, it's just uh, <laughs> because yeah it's just yeah you said it <laughs> it's two extremes that's really what it's coming down to and there's really nothing more at least you could say at the moment and obviously what she said um it was obviously just for headliners and that's how it is nowadays freaking sports news it's just all about headliners and clicks that's really it no no genuine um data or information or facts because it doesn't get enough clicks and it doesn't really mean that much money especially if it's i think wasn't it an espn mm-hmm. commentator who said that and like first take or something like that said said what exactly um shut up and dribble no nah, she was some pundit i think for fox perfect <laughs> that's perfect fox Perfect example. Can't say no more than that. <laughs> but uh, now that we're talking about the NBA, dude. Oh my god, I'm so. This is the most pumped I've been for a freaking season since Kobe. Kobe. Um, before Kobe tore his ACL, because uh, finally the Lakers, even though through all that crappy way of managing things from last year, when the news came out that they were offering the whole team, and that uh, they didn't want players there, and then. It just this motivation and injuries it and Lonzo Ball. Now it seems like at least we're good. <laughs> we're not crap, but we're good. We're not we're not quite there for a ring. I still feel I'm gonna be honest and I feel like your Clippers are for sure having a higher chance to win a ring unless we pick up some really good some good role players. But it just it's a great time to be alive to watch some basketball. Well, how about you? Yeah, and that's the big issue right now too. They need to keep LeBron in Anthony Davis healthy. That is the big thing because the Lakers are doing good right now, but it's just a matter of for how long. Yep. That's the big issue right now. What do you think about your Clippers? My Clippers, I feel good. I am sad to say I haven't watched the past two or three games. I've just been really busy with work, mm-hmm. but um, I like the progress. I know there's you know tons of progress to be made. Paul George still isn't here, so things are going to be changing, but I like what I see so far in the NBA right now. I... I have been liking the Mavs. I have been watching a few of their games. The Mavs are Ooh. pretty nice. Who knew Porzingis could play basketball? <laughs> oh, my God. I remember. You remember when he got traded? 
I I was going off on our group chat on how dumb of a trade that was. And the and the whole the only reason Angel gave he's like, "Oh, it's for salary." I'm like, "Dude, Porzingis is making like what 4 million and you guys trade your best player away so you could get other four mediocre power forwards and Julius Randle. <laughs> oh my yeah, god. Well, there was also rumors that he wanted to leave for a while. Like you you heard the little uh conspiracy about him not actually being injured, right? I'm guess I'm guessing it's the same thing as the Kawhi thing. Yeah, same thing. People were saying that he's been cleared for a while, that he should have been playing, but they're using that injury for him just to stay out. And I think he just was so unhappy with the team. And they just finally used that trade to get rid of him. And that's something that a lot of people have been saying. I can kind of see it too. Because he's been... Basically, they said he's been clear to play for a while. And you see him playing. It doesn't look like he's been injured and not playing for a while. It looks like he's been hooping. Or he, it, it, It's interesting because it just comes, back, comes down to the topic of how much um, employees are have leverage nowadays. Or trying to get leverage, even from basketball, faking injuries just to leave a place. They feel so confident they could do that. And even employees from other companies, they get leverage from protection from, um, mm. you know, simple things that could happen. Even even though it's, it's, a, it's I feel like it's kind of a stretch saying it, but it's kind of making the same sense where, um, you know, uh, employ, employees are just uh, having so much leverage. And it seems like, I don't know, it, it could be a plus or a minus, <laughs> or at least NBA wise. <laughs> Well, it's kind of scary because uh, either way, loyalty doesn't seem to exist now, and also, um, yeah, and also uh, people are now making their own decisions. But to that extreme, mm-hmm. possibly, I'm not sure. No, def- it's not a confirmed def- thing, you know. Yeah, no, I I definitely agree, and I think a few times we've talked about pa- uh, basketball and podcasts, but those are always the podcasts that don't make it to the light. <laughs> I don't think we've had any <laughs> released podcasts on basketball. Mm. But something we did talk about at some point. And, you know, I'm glad Paul George joined the Clippers. I think that is a huge thing for the Clippers. He's a great player. If he could lift up his arms. But I still don't like (laughs) the way he did it. I still don't like that. Because the whole issue... So, for those that don't watch basketball, I want you guys to understand this. So, he was on a max contract, right? Didn't he have, like, two or three more years on his contract? Mm -hmm. So, the thing with, um, you know... Everyone knows what a contract is. If you're on a cra- contract and there's still time on the left in the contract, you have to serve that time, basically. And, you know, that's not just in sports. That's just anywhere. So the big issue was Paul George from the Oklahoma City Thunder had a few years left in his contract. So it's one of those issues where you shouldn't even have to worry about a player on contract. He's on contract. You know, he should already be there. He should be in your team in a year and two years from now. The big issue with that was when he sort of um, gave that ultimatum and he forced his way out of the thunder and he got traded to the Clippers. I don't like the idea of that. And that, that I thought of that when you said the loyalty thing, because it's one of those issues now where, well, in the future, does a max contract even mean anything? If you get someone a max contract, are they even going to play for you in two years, a year from now? And that kind of upset me. And that kind of worries me because... I mean, if Paul George did that, who's to say he won't do it again? Hmm. It's um... and there were um, there was somebody I think he, someone from um, Oklahoma, like the mayor or something, oh. and he basically said, "We've come to a point where even if you're under contract, you're still a free agent." Facts. And that should that shouldn't be the case, but that's what it is right now. If you're unhappy and you're in a team, but you still have three years left on that contract. You can say you're unhappy and leave. You can get traded, and that should not be like that. And I'm not, I have never. Okay, I'm a Laker fan, but I've never been so much of a LeBron defender as they call it. But what annoys me is that everything, even even though Le, I don't think did, LeBron never forced a trade to get traded somewhere else, right? He never did that. He, but they no, always like him. I know where you're going with this. And that I, I hate crap. that people give him so. And it's so dumb. LeBron's got to be one of the most hated people in sports. And, yeah, and it's like, and they always take it on LeBron. And LeBron by now, you know, he's already used to it. He doesn't care. He's a freaking millionaire. He's the best. All this goat talk. He doesn't really have to care much. And he's already taught himself to not care. But it just gets annoying how, even though he's irrelevant to the conversation, he still gets linked to it. And (laughs) it just goes back again to the extremist part, I feel. (laughs) Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, dude. There's like no loyalty nowadays. Um, I I thought first it was a joke, 
But then as a reason with all this stuff going on, even uh, I think they're even looking into training Chris Paul and all this stuff. They're just constant moving pieces. It just feels that, um, how do you say this? Like you can't really, if even especially if you're from a small market team, you can't really, you know, look forward to basketball because you know one of your team even it doesn't have that much history wouldn't attract that many people and even if you have good players it'll be harder for um, loyalty to be there i love what lillard's lillard's doing that was great Mm -hmm. maybe beal what he did when he just signed an extension hopefully he stays there honestly because the wizards are playing pretty well too but um just seems crazy how much more leverage they've gotten recently. And I'm just, I always think, like, who who was the first player to ever force a trade? Like, I know previously it happened, you know, like, Kobe almost did it. Freaking uh, Shaq well, kind of did too that too, but is, it's picked up recently. The thing, too, is we're seeing that on social media now, you know. That probably happened a lot back in the day, but we just didn't really know about it. Back in the day, I remember specifically, because I've been I've been a basketball fan for as long as I can remember, and there was a point where before social media, we had to find out our news on the newspaper. I specifically remember when the Lakers traded for, um, when they got uh, Carl Malone and Gary Payton, I remember reading that in the newspaper, and that's just not how it was anymore. Mm-hmm. But now that it's on social media, we're hearing even more. And I think now we're hearing about all these things, but I'm sure it's happened before. But to this magnitude, within a couple of years? Well, but well, you said who was the uh, first. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying I bet it's happened before. Now it's in greater frequency now, way greater frequency. Actually, um, I don't know if you heard this. I think it was like a couple days ago. Kobe said in an interview that even if his body was 100 percent and he could go back to the NBA, he would not do it. And specifically for the reason that the NBA right now, I'm paraphrasing, he didn't say this, but the state of the NBA right now is where people feel like they have to move teams to win a championship. Mm -hmm. It's not hustle and build your team, build your team together and win a championship. It's not that anymore. It's, hey, let's trade this person, this person, this person. Let's get this guy. We need this star. We need this star and this star. You know, like you're not even winning as a team. You're I don't know. That NBA stresses me and out. Then, and then also you add in the part where um, with Sam Hinkie where he did the trust the process crap where he would just stack up draft picks and then eventually you get future stars. That's what is the perfect solution to players not wanting to be there anymore. You can just be like, okay, I'll just get a couple picks. It sucks that I'm losing this guy, but at least I get a great reward for it. And people know what it ha- what they have to give up, especially w- with your Clippers. <laughs> How much did they give up? Like six first round draft picks or something? <laughs> Oh, yeah, we gave a lot. A ton. But you, you know what? What I've learned what is you got to trust the process, Al. Okay, trust the process for two years. If you guys don't win the conference finals at least once, then Kawhi's gone. <laughs> hey, speaking of um, trust the process, did you hear about the um, Joel Embiid and Carl Anthony Towns beef for now? <laughs> I, I, I heard about it, but <laughs> the thing that captivates me the most is someone put a meme... Um, of them fighting and then jimmy butler is smiling in the background <laughs> are you caught up with the feud of what happened um not really i just saw the videos but from what it seems like freaking the beat like always it just flopped and then anthony towns got pissed about it yeah so they got really physical and it wasn't even a fight um it was like they were just kind of grappling and hugging each other mm-hmm. but on social media they were attacking each other it was really funny so joel and bead he posted something and he was like, oh, you know, great win. And he said something about, oh, I grew up around lions and today they had a cat on me. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, so I for love those, yeah, so, He's no, so good at commentating. Yeah, so so very, very fast in case the non-basketball player watching fans are listening. These two players that got in a fight, Joel Embiid from the 76ers and Carl Anthony Towns from the Timberwolves. Carl Anthony Towns, uh, they call him Cat. Because, you know, his initials. So, yeah, he's basically calling him a little cat. But no, so what's funny is Carl Anthony Towns retaliated. And he posted photos from the game. Like, different photos and stuff. And the last photo, Al, is the one of Joel Embiid crying in the last game from the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? Remember when he was crying and it was oh all over social media? God, dude, yeah, all the memes. 
yeah so he posted that and i think he said like something like ain't no bitch or something oh like that God. no but it's funny so i don't know what's happened if there's any been any advancement in this feud but that's what happened as of a few days ago but i just love the drama in the nba because it's not just on the court it's in the press and it's in social media too and i just love it watch this little fight plus a couple good good close games between those two that's gonna start a rivalry <laughs> just because of that one yeah the fact that the fact that they're both dominant bigs mm-hmm. But Joel Embiid has that on him, just the fact that they've, they've done more. Oh, the Sixers? Oh, yeah. Table, table never yeah. done crap. <laughs> I mean, they were in the Eastern Conference Finals, right? Wasn't that the game? Um, I don't know. This year, they don't even seem that good, dude. Horford? Why, why did I, you add Horford? <laughs> hey, they got Taco. Hey, what's up? They got uh, Taco Falls, right? Oh, Taco Taco. Dude, that guy could be nice, honestly. You, it'll have to be like... A, I forgot. There was a like a. There's some tall dudes like. Um, have you heard of Manu Bull? He used to play like in the seventies, I think. Yes. That guy was like six, seven foot seven. That guy was could shoot threes and he could block for days, but he could be like a super sub for you. Uh, like um um, Luke Walton's dad when in his later years when he was still a star but couldn't play that much because of injuries, he could be your guy like that. He could just be another Kindle off the bench. That guy's nice, dude. Now that we're talking about draft picks, how about that Zion hype train going, huh? The dude is, is I don't know. They, they compared him one time to LeBron, or not even one time for a minute. They compared him. I'm like, dude, are you serious right now? I just know they, uh, how long is he out for? Um, Six to eight weeks, I think. Yeah, I just know they did way better with, with him. Because I saw the preseason games, and it looks like they're doing pretty bad now. But, like, the games are close. Um, John, Brandon Ingram mm-hmm. is coming up and being that star everyone was hyping him up to be. And how he was playing towards the end of the season before he got that uh, cloth. And his, um, I saw yeah. I saw that the Rockets got blown out by the Heat Yo, today. That made me happy. Oh, my God. I was like, what? You have two dominant players like uh, James Harden and Russell Westbrook, and you get blown out by the Heat. I'm not saying they're a bad team, but your team, when you're the Rockets and you're talked about so much being playoff contention, and you get blown out by the Heat. Um, I do. Did you watch any of the game or some highlights? No, I. Like I said I have. I don't know anything about the NBA the past couple of days. Well, I was. I I just I saw that score and that's it. <laughs> well. From I was watching some highlights before we started recording, and um, I do know that the Heat like blew them out of the court in the first quarter, and that that's why they probably kept the yeah. lead. And give it to the Heat, man; they have pretty good defense when it comes to specific players like Butler, Bama, Adebayo, and um, I think Winslow's pretty good too. So uh, they just grew up that huge lead. Last time I checked, uh, well, the last clip I saw or the skit of it, it was four to twenty one. So it just seems it was a really cool start. But either way, for a team to have at least not high standards anymore, but kind of pretty high high standards for that team, I just felt like uh, Harding and Westbrook were breaking everything. And then that just led to that big lead, plus some defense too. But it's just ridiculous. I guess Russ Westbrook – no, I'm sorry, not Westbrook, Westbrook. I guess James Harden just didn't get enough free throws in this game. <laughs> he didn't get the uh, Marcus Smart badge activated? Before we get on with this NBA conversation, because I know there's a few other things we want to talk about, I think it's funny when we talk about James Harden flopping to our friend Angel. <laughs> Shout out to Angel. <laughs> because, I mean, I mean, flopping, I'm sure that's in every sport, right? I know it's in yeah. soccer. I've heard, a, I, I didn't know it was so common in soccer until I watched the last World <laughs> Cup and it was like so much flopping. But, um,. It's funny because Marcus Smart from the Boston Celtics, if he flops, Angel gets pissed off and he calls him a trash player and this guy cannot play, this is pathetic. But if James Harden flops, then Angel's like, oh no, he's smart. He's he's um he's using the rules for the game. He's using it against the refs. Like he's, you know, he's being strategic. But it's just funny though, like when you're so biased towards a player or a team. Double standards. And you have those double standards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, L, let's move on from the NBA. Uh, one um, thing I wanted to add, though. Before, you before bring we up, go on. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I I forgot which game they played, but 
I do remember I was watching a little bit of the towards the end of the game. Uh, I was against the Pelicans, I think. Uh, I was watching that game. Really good game. Really close game. Went mm-hmm. to overtime, I think. Um, they were Harden kept flopping. Like you noticed, the dude would like hit himself even probably if if, if it led to free throws. And the refs were not calling any of them. And then the commentators were roasting the crap out of them. He's like, "Yeah, dude, refs aren't the refs aren't gonna bite on on that show or, or that acting." <laughs> it was so funny. I loved it, dude. Just um, did you see that play of him bouncing, throwing the ball against the floor, and it hit him in the face? Um, when last year or you're talking about this year? No, no, a few games ago against the Pelicans. You didn't see no, that? No, no, I don't. I do remember he got hit in the face by Giannis's to, pass <laughs> the last year. I'm gonna have to send it. I'm gonna have to send it to you, and I'll probably put the link on this episode. But I guess he didn't get a call like the way he he thought he was supposed to. Like you were saying, when he was flopping, he wasn't getting those calls. But he basically grabbed the basketball and slammed it against the floor, and it bounced up and it hit him in the face. <laughs> this, this happened like this past week, and I guess Josh Hart was blocking him. And Josh Josh Hart's facial expression is like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and Josh Hart made fun of him. I think in yesterday's game, he was playing. They were I don't know who the Pelicans played yesterday, mm-hmm. but they showed a clip of him grabbing the ball and throwing it against the floor and pretending it hit him himself in the face. He was making fun of James Harden. It was really funny. <laughs> I thought I think when anyone makes fun of James Harden, they're automatically That's my funny. favorite person. Um, James, just to close out the basketball stuff, um, James Harden used to be such a power. Just a little um, fantasy basketball reference. He used to be such a powerhouse for basketball, but now. They added another stat where it's cool that you score 50 points. But if you shot 50 shots, they discount the 50 shots away from the points and or from your fantasy points. And if they also count how many free throws you, you tried. And if you miss them, it goes against you. <laughs> this is all James Harden effect. It's just funny how, <laughs> how all this is happening. And not all the fan, James Harden fanboys are going to be happy about this. But yeah, <laughs> just a little add. <laughs> It's going to be like the old, uh, leave Britney alone. They're going to be saying, leave James alone. Oh, my God, dude. But, um, oh. I'm alive. Okay, um, so it is now November. Man, the time is flying. Mm, just like this podcast. Were you gone for all of um, October? Basically, dude. I was gone for the whole time. So you basically skipped a month no, over here. I was living in another, in another country. Or countries. There's another world. Yeah, I was going to say world. It kind of felt like another world um, because you were like, oh, damn, dude. It just feels great to travel. You got to do it one day. So heading into this podcast, you know, because at times um, there's always that, you know, what are we going to talk about? So I usually like look into like one topic or so. Mm-hmm. But I, I got a little curious about because you've heard of No Shave November and I'm sure most of our listeners have as well. That's something I'm sure we've been hearing. I think I've heard it since high school. No shave in November. Before most of my friends could even shave as well because they didn't have any facial hair. <laughs> the but, mustache. Um, so Nate, yeah. So for those that don't know, uh, No Shave in November is typically just what it sounds. In the month of November, you don't shave. And there was a point where, you know, I was curious about it, and I found out that it's uh, out of cancer awareness. But I never really looked into it past that. So I really looked into it this time. And there's actually an organization. There's this website called noshave.org. I think we should all look into this. But um, the website says, what is No Shave November? And it says, the concept, the goal of No Shave November is to grow awareness by embracing our hair, which many cancer patients lose and letting it grow wild and free. Donate the money you typically spend on shaving and grooming to educate about cancer prevention, save lives, and aid those fighting the battle. So I didn't know all that. That's pretty interesting to me. And I like the idea of that. The idea of don't shave and the money that you would normally put into these products for shaving, Mm -hmm. you know, that's a couple bucks. That's not even a lot of money. It's just a couple bucks, you know, razor, blades, shaving cream and stuff. You know, just donate a couple bucks to this organization. Uh, is this something you've done before, Al? No Shave November? Um, I've done that accidentally where I was just... Accidentally? <laughs> like back in the dorms, I remember. Like, okay, just to, just a little recent thing. Legit, you told me about No Shave November. And I didn't remember until you told me and I shaved like Halloween day. <laughs> so I'm like, oh almost failed it (laughs) 
So this is something we're going to honor then, right? It's something we're going to do as a podcast. I'm oh, assuming. hell yeah, man. Gonna grow that beard out. We should do that. We should encourage our listeners. You know what? You guys have a couple days in case you guys already shaved. All right, guys. But this episode will be releasing November 4th, Monday. You guys only have four days, you know, that you've missed. But I think we should all do this. All right, guys. All men. This is your checkpoint here on out. Don't shave. Actually, thanks for bringing that up. Because when you go to the website, it shows a couple people and they're carrying signs and it says stop cancer before it starts. But it has men and women. And I think oh. we've commonly associated this with men I, I, and I facial finish, hair. Though. I didn't finish though. But then finish. I started looking. No. Oh, oh go, ahead, ladies, go ahead. Go ahead. If you'd like, you could join us. Just don't shave. <laughs> no matter how disgusting <laughs> you feel. <laughs> if you want to join us, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> So, if you go to the website, there's, you know, more info on it in case you want to do it the way they intended this to be done. Of course, you know, there's there's no rules. You're not breaking a law if you don't do this, you don't do this correctly. Mm-hmm. But they basically say, hey, just grow out your hair. Arm hair, leg hair, armpit hair, head hair. Just don't shave. And they also specifically say if you like the cause but you don't want to do this, maybe support somebody that is doing this. They encourage making up... Um, not GoFundMe, mm. but I think you can sign up with these guys. It's kind of, it's kind of like a GoFundMe of their own, where if you can sign up, make your own page, and people can donate. Mm. So there's something to look into. I think there's a lot of interesting resources on this. It's called No Shave November, NoShave.org, and they also show you like their partners. They work with St. Jude's Children's Hospital. They work with uh, Fight Colorect- Colorectal Cancer. So they they work with other stuff too. And like I said, this is something that we've heard about. For so long, but I didn't know any of this. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Mm. So I'm growing the beard. And talking about GoFundMe, if you guys would like to donate to Savages Unscripted, we're trying to currently afford some groceries. So if you'd like, go to the description that we're going to link right now. And we'll <laughs> you could donate us some groceries. <laughs> yeah, you guys. I am, um, I'm not living at home. I'm paying for my own groceries. So if you fight for this cause, if you donate money... You can feed a Hector a need, and you can you can get it's more podcast for you guys. That's investing in the podcast. If I eat, I do more podcasts. Hector is willing to do a solo episode for every ten dollars donated. How about that? Let's go. Right. Buy me some uh, pancakes. <laughs> I feel like you're just gonna go to the clearance section in Ralph's and be like, "Fuck yeah." <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna go ham on that thing you're gonna tell the employee hey hey uh, just leave the stock stock uh, back hold for me <laughs> i'll take it all <laughs> do, you, do you have anything on the savages unscripted tab that's what i'm gonna say yeah but we're already running at about an hour what do you say we cap this baby off mm. um oh i just want to say a little I'm gonna, I have so many stories about my trip. I'm just going to extend it over all our podcast episodes. I definitely do want to make a little, um, down the future, a little review of traveling places, good places to go, all this fun stuff, where to get your, um, where to book your stuff. But uh, I, gotta just, I just got to say, because I, from my experience at least, and you guys will ner- learn about this later, Venice is so overrated. I, oh my God. It, uh, I, got, I probably have to go again, but... It's so pricey, felt like Vegas, and it was the belly was not there for me at least. So <laughs> I just wanted to get that out. So what you're saying, it's not as worth it or as beautiful as San Bernardino. That's what you're mm. saying. San Bernardino's got its spots, you know. Like if you know this place. Yeah, man, it's got its it's got its charm, dude. You, I've seen some crazy things in San Bernardino. <laughs> <laughs> From the homeless man, dudes fighting with the knife to some. I, I didn't tell that story, so I'm going to tell oh. it right now because now it's just an inside joke people don't understand. I'm just going to say it very fast. I, okay, very quick rant. I hate when people bring up inside jokes in public around other people and like 90% of the group don't know what's going on. That's not what an inside joke is, you guys. Mm-hmm. But anyways, so uh, one day a friend and I were going, we were passing by where my job is. It was like broad daylight. It was about uh, five o'clock maybe. And we're at a stoplight. We're right by the um, San Bernardino School District building, so it's a district building. And at the corner, like literally feet, like four feet away from us, there's two homeless men fighting. 
And one of them is doing fisticuffs, and the other guy has a fucking kitchen knife in his hand. He has a long kitchen knife in his hand, and there's like one guy in between them stopping them. It looks like um, Chris Pratt in Jurassic Park when he's, you know, <laughs> standing between between the dinosaurs. That's what it looks like. But, like, this was like four feet away from us, and I'll, me and my friend were like, yeah, let's uh, put up the windows now. But this guy had a freaking kitchen knife in broad daylight in front of a school district building. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is San Bernardino. You should have done like a little wage with your friends, you know, just parked a couple, a uh, couple feet away from them, and just put money on. <laughs> do a, <laughs> dude. do like a fight club. Yeah, start another one. Let's do it. <laughs> Savages unscripted fight clubs. Every, open Saturday, Sundays from midnight to midday. <laughs> I'm gonna record it and have people. Um, I'm gonna do like a live stream and have people bet. Put it on Twitch, on bro. Who's gonna win? On Facebook Live, We're, we'll be in everything. All right. Twitch, Facebook Live, IG Live, all that good stuff. So people in our audience could enjoy what we provide. <laughs> See, this is my thing. That guy was fighting somebody with a kitchen knife. This man was just bare fist. So this guy has got to be super confident. He's in a way to fight against somebody with a kitchen knife. This man's got to be a fighter, right? Mm-hmm. He's got to know some shit. He knows some Krav Maga, some Kung Fu. He knows something. For you to go into a fight with somebody with a big-ass knife in broad daylight, you've got to be pretty damn confident in your ability to fight, right? I mean, I, I would want to have my money on him because it's just the more the mystery of it. Like, what does this guy know? And now that you're talking about being confident with the knife, I, I just want to add a little story to or a video that I watched yesterday with um, my friend. So in Argentina... People get super competitive about soccer to a point where even gang gang members get involved. And then, then there was this small city where they had a lot of issues where legit uh, rival fan no, um, home fans throw, mol- throw Molotovs. I don't know if it was just one time or multiple times, but they threw it at visiting fans. And then there was this one dude who wanted to control that. And uh, how he defended himself was was having two, I don't know, like, swords, like one little sword and freaking big sword. And he was doing all, he got interviewed by this Spanish um, um, uh, journalist. And he was showing off all his tricks and all this and that. He's like, yeah, you know, I run shit. And then two days after they do the interview with him, they found the bashed, his head bashed in fucking dead in the streets. <laughs> I was like, what the... Oh, my God, dude. That just reminded me of that. I just had to add that. And ladies and gentlemen, Savages and Scripted is a family podcast. I'm just letting you know. Share us with your family. We like to talk about fighting and bashing heads in. And basketball. So with that being said. Yeah, you guys share us. Share us, you guys. Follow our Instagram. Share us. If we grow, we can do more. Follow our Instagram. So Savages Plug us unscripted. Out. And Twitter, Savages Unscripted. Yeah, yes. Uh, well, Twitter's weird. You can look us up as Savages Unscripted, but the actual Twitter handle only fits Savages Unscript. Okay, Savages Unscript. Twitter it sucks. Is. But um, how does it feel that how does it feel that you're back on my podcast? Okay, so you know how after a workout, you've just been drinking whey protein, water, and that's it? So you're all tired. So what you're saying is this well, will automatically be the highest rated podcast <laughs> is what you're saying. It's going to be a buildup. It's going to be a buildup. It's going to get better and better. Trust. But it's like that sensation when you go to the all-you-can-eat buffet, for, especially for sushi, and just devour the place. That's, that's how good it feels. The podcast by the people for the people. That's what we are. <laughs> and this has been another episode of Savages Unscripted. My name is Al, or Papi Chulo. And my name is Hector. And we're 